Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. I'd like to talk to you today about streaming data from Scylla to Kafka. Now, uh, what's Confluent? Well, we're a company that makes an event streaming platform based on Apache Kafka. So that's an on-prem product. And there's also a cloud service called Confluent Cloud. That's most of the elements or a lot of the elements of that same platform as a fully managed service. Uh, I run the developer advocacy team here at Confluent. So it's my job to help people understand Kafka, understand the broader platform and the various systems that it can integrate with, the things it can do for you, and the kinds of software architectures that arise around Kafka, and really to help people understand asynchronous event-driven programming. So some basics on Kafka. It's um, fundamentally a system for managing events. Okay, Its worldview is event-centric. Things happen in the world. And what you do with Kafka is you remember those things in order in a log as immutable data structures, as immutable events. Uh, of course, you need to do computation over those and all kinds of other things happen. But basically, that's that's events. That's really where we are. And so um, when those events happen in the world, we put them into a thing called a topic. A topic is split up into partitions. Partitions can live on um, you know, multiple machines. So you've got this way of scaling out uh, the, the fundamental data structure of the event log. And that's that really is what is at the heart of, of Kafka is a big distributed log or a bunch of big distributed logs. It would be no fun only to write. So of course we can read as well. And a number of interesting things happen in the read case. Uh, you've got scalable consumers, right? So I can deploy now a cluster of readers to do computation over what's in a topic. And I can have many readers on a topic. These are logs, not queues. Uh, there's the temptation to come to Kafka thinking that it's a messaging system like our messaging systems of yore, and it's not. Uh, it really is a different thing. It's a distributed log, not a distributed queue. And so having many readers on one event stream that have different interests and are, are separate applications doing different kinds of computation for, for different user-oriented use cases, that's all totally cool. Once you've got that, though, a bunch of other things have to happen. Like I've mentioned stream processing. Uh, that's a big, big topic in Kafka. Huh, I said topic. Uh, and it's, it's out of our scope right now. Data integration is not out of our scope. And this is a thing that happens. You've got data in Kafka and you're doing this real-time asynchronous processing on it. And there's, there's all kinds of great things happening. Then there's data that's not in Kafka, say in Scylla, right? That needs to be in Scylla and ought to be in Scylla. But you also want your event-driven applications to see it. Well, Connect is a server process that runs external to the core Kafka uh, brokers. It's a part of Apache Kafka, Kafka Connect is, but it's, it's apart from the, the core cluster, uh, runs as an application and does the work of data integration, interfacing to source systems and then producing those records into Kafka topics or consuming records from Kafka topics and interfacing to sync systems. You've got both parts of that uh, source and sync thing indicated on this diagram here. There's an ecosystem of connectors that are pluggable. You don't have to write these. Somebody else usually has written them for you and you just kind of drop them into your connect cluster, including the Scylla connector. So let's talk about the Scylla source connector. Now, uh, it's based on an open source platform called Debezium. And if you look at the so-called change data capture connectors, that, that's the, really the best way of getting data out of a relational database and into Kafka. Uh, a lot of those, the ones that are open source, are based on Debezium. It's a great extensible platform. Usually if somebody's doing CDC from Postgres or uh, MySQL or you know traditional smaller database like that, uh, that's going to be based on Debezium. And now Scylla is also. So that's a cool thing. Uh, and I'm not defining change data capture. I understand that was the session just before me. So hopefully you saw that session and you have some idea how CDC works in Scylla. It's actually really cool. Uh, it's just a cool topic in general that's worth knowing about. Here's again uh, that canonical diagram, architecture diagram of Kafka Connect. On the left, you've got Scylla. Okay, there's your Scylla cluster. And there's a table that you want to get into Kafka. Well, uh, because Scylla has CDC support built in, you enable that on this table, and I'll show you some code for that later, um, and that, that creates that CDC table automatically. So that CDC table is populated by the database with a description of the changes that happen. So if you've got inserts, updates, deletes happening on that base table, uh, records get inserted into the CDC table describing those changes, which means in the middle, the Scylla connector, so that's that middle block there is a Kafka Connect cluster, and there's a Scylla connector deployed to that cluster. 
And just to make it very concrete, a Scylla connector is a jar file, right? It's a, it's all a JVM based thing. These are typically written in Java. And so you've got this Uber jar with all the stuff and you deploy that to uh, the connect cluster. And then that's going to read from that CDC table. Normally doing CDC on a database, there might be some gymnastics you have to go through. In the case of Scylla, you don't. You just get new records inserted into the CDC table and you consume them as the connector and then produce them. And we see them being produced to topics A, B, C, dot, 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 through N over there. Uh, I, can, I can get those new records and just put them in a topic. And now that topic contains a change log, an event log of the things that have happened in the table. It's really a, a neat partnership with Scylla's CDC feature and just the way Connect works and the way the, the nature of topics uh, works out pretty well. Of course, you might want to go to the other way, right? Um, the, you know, you've got data in a topic and you want that to get into a table in Scylla. Uh, so maybe people can query it in whatever way that the table is designed to be queried, since topics are notoriously not queryable, right? Uh, so that's a sync connector where you read new events from that topic and then write them, uh, insert them really as new rows in that table. So you got source and sync. Both of those are things that you can do in Connect. The mind boggles with the possibilities, frankly. Um, if I've got one Scylla cluster and I'm sourcing from it and I've got stuff in a topic now, well, it's in a topic, I can then sync into other Scylla connectors. And that's just the simplest kind of pipeline integration you ever did see. I got stuff over there, I needed to get there. Uh, you could do that with Connect and Kafka. Of course, that stuff, once it's in a topic, people usually, they start wanting to do things with it. And so there may be some stream processing jobs running in there, a Kafka Streams application, a KSQL DB query, or something like that, that's processing the internal, or the, the rather the, the first initial, uh, records coming in from that source cluster uh, before they're uh, synced into uh, the clusters over on the right. Um, also, as a side note, Connect supports the idea of what are called single message transforms. So I just described a fairly elaborate process where there could be very sophisticated, stateful, real-time stream processing going on in the middle on indicated here in this diagram in that Kafka cluster before the data goes out to the Scylla clusters on the right. Um, well, Connect lets you do these stateless single message uh, modifications. Like say there's something that's got some PII data in the source table, but you don't want that to go through to the sync tables. You can filter it out before it gets into Kafka. Or suppose there's a field in the message that you want to extract and make the message key or something else you want to mask, things like this, or swap. There are these nice little stateless transformations that you can configure declaratively to happen on that data uh, before it gets in or before it gets out of the cluster. You can do SMTs on either side. Let's look at some code. So I'm going to create a table, or create a key space, of course, first. Simple replication strategy, replication factor of one, because it's a demo and we're cowboys. Uh, create a table called T with a few columns there. And note the red part there, CDC equals enabled true. That means I want a CDC table to be created automatically on this table. How do I configure the connector? So um, I don't expect you to just drink all this in. I'm not going to go through it line by line. The important thing is here, this is a connector configuration. Okay, this is what you actually do. You deploy the Scylla connector to your connect cluster. Uh, there's some command line tooling for that um, that uh, Confluent makes available to make connect a little easier. Uh, you could just download a jar and put it in the right directory and then it's, it's class loadable and it's fine. You know, it, there are lots of ways to do it. But with that connector deployed, this is what you do. You don't write code, you configure the connector. Where's the cluster? Where's the source cluster? What's the table name? Uh, where is the Kafka cluster that I'm producing to? Uh, what topic am I going to be writing things to? All those things are just standard configuration parameters along with key format and value format and, and uh, the other goodies that you see here. Uh, you plug those bits of configuration in and you go. And that's the magic of Connect is that it's declarative and you don't want to be writing data integration code if somebody's already written that code for you. Like it might be fun, but you have a job to do. Like there are features, there are customers to serve. This is this is connecting things and you want your friends at Scylla to have done this for you, which is the case here. Okay, now uh, big data time. We're gonna do a couple of inserts. I hope you can keep up with the scale here, uh, but we'll just insert a couple of things into that T table and the CDC table will, is gonna get automatically populated. Uh, and it's going to look like this right here. So we'll see the description of the inserts. 
which the connector then gets to consume, and photographic memory, assuming you memorized that properties file I showed you two or three slides ago, I said that the key and the value format were JSON, and so uh, that's going to be serialized as JSON. That's going to look like this. So, you know, imagine all the config was there and stuff was deployed and connect was running and the jar, the, the, the Scylla connector was deployed to it. All that's there. As soon as an insert happens, bloop, 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 this JSON gets produced to the destination topic. That's what happens. Anytime there's a modification, whoo, uh, record is produced to topic, serialized as JSON. And it runs that way forever or, you know, for some approximation of forever, for long enough, you know, for our purposes. Uh, right now, just deltas. We don't have pre-image and post-image working in that connector yet, or rather Scylla doesn't have that working yet, but that's coming soon, which comports nicely with the before and after fields uh, that are standard in Debezium, if you know Debezium. Uh, so that's coming soon. Now, if you want to know more about Connect, about Kafka, about stream processing, this is the website for you, Confluent Developer. That's developer.confluent.io. That's where you go. There are tutorial videos. There are hands-on tutorials. There's, there's a few Connect tutorials. So you can get a connect cluster running uh, in Docker and build the config file and kind of see things move around yourself. Uh, there are no tutorials as of this recording there for Scylla, but you can take that connect machinery that the Kafka tutorials give you and easily modify that. You've got something that works, and now you can modify that to do the Scylla stuff that I've been talking about in this presentation with your own test cluster running locally or, or whatever source data that you've got. Uh, so this would be a great place to get started. With that, I want to thank you very much. Uh, here's me on Twitter. Here is my email. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you and hope you have a great Scylla Summit.